Okay, um, I've been with the Marconon program for 41 years. I started with the program in 1967, and uh, I was at the uh, Arizona State Prison um, where I was introduced to the program by William Benitez, who created the program. So I'm going to talk about narcotic addiction. I've briefly started into it. And then I'm also going to talk about Narconon. I want to mention that Narconon is the name of some therapy groups that I set up for narcotic addicts at Arizona State Prison. There are two of these uh, therapy groups up there. One of them is inside of the walls, and the other one is just outside of the walls, which is uh, set up there for the younger offender, or men under 25. These groups, Narconon, are the only ones throughout the world. When I say that, I mean we are the only uh, therapy groups that use the particular science that we use. Our purpose in Narconon, there are many of us that lecture from time to time, our purpose is to be able to set these programs up throughout the United States and all of the various penitentiaries. And many people are really inquiring about Narconon because Many people are finding out of our statistic. I'd like to mention that up to now, in the last 18 months, we have had 12 graduates, or 12 men, who have left these Narconon groups from Arizona State Prison. And out of the 12 men, none have returned back to prison. These men are really doing well. We have six here in Phoenix, and we have some men in Tucson, and we have some men in Los Angeles. And these men are really, really doing great. It's fantastic. Many of you may be aware that 12 men out of 12 is unheard of. Your federal narcotic hospitals with their staffs of psychiatrists, psychologists, are having a very difficult time in getting any cures with narcotic addicts. Theirs is somewhere under 10%. It varies. It fluctuates. And so when all of a sudden a group comes along and starts to be able to, to put out the statistics that we are, well, people want to know about it. They say, well, what is it that you're using? Man, what do you have? What kind of potential? Well, we in Arconon have a certain something that before a person can pull out of narcotics, before a person can pull out of anything, if a person was having difficulty in school, if a person was having difficulty at home, if a person was having difficulties anywhere, the only way that he could get out of the pits would be to become more able. In other words, he would have to have a greater ability. I started using narcotics when I was 13 years old. I started smoking pot. And I figured, well, I'm just going to smoke pot once in a while. It'll be a weekend thing, I'll just smoke it at parties. And I did this for quite some time. That was the only time that I used it. And this went on for two years. But then all of a sudden I got tired of driving on a Model T, and I wanted to get into a Cadillac, a Cadillac. I wanted something with some horsepower. So that's when I got the needle. But I had always said I will never go on the needle. But it happened just so casually, the next thing I knew, I was tying my arm and trying it out with some friends of mine. So anyway, I went on to heroin when I was 15 years. And when I started on pot, it's fantastic. I was going to, uh, on, my, on my way to play baseball, and there were some other friends of mine. This was in Tucson. And on my way to play baseball, we were passing in front of a porch. There were some friends up, up there, and then they called down. One of them called down and said, hey, man, how would you like to fly like a bird? And he went through the whole thing like that. And we looked at him. We, knew, we didn't quite know what was happening. We thought he was a little goofy. And we knew him. He was one of the friends around the block there. And then he said, how would you like to uh, blow some pot? You know, how would you like to smoke some weed? Well, the other kids got scared, and they ran off. And I started to also. But then he said, oh, Willie ain't chicken. Willie's hep. So I didn't want to be chicken. And of course, I wanted to be hep. So I walked up there, 
and put, you know, put that first reefer in my mouth. I wonder, I, this guy, I looked up to him. You know, the guy dressed well and uh, had his shoes shined all the time, his hair combed real nice, and he had girls, and he had a little money in his pocket, and he, he could smooth talk, and all these things. And I said, man, that cat is hip. And I wanted to somewhat be like him, you know. So I started smoking pot, and I'd look at the way he walked, because this cat was hip. And like he told me, he says, man, you got to be hip, you know, to get high. You got to know where, you got to know what's happening. It's where it's at, Jack, you see. So I wanted to be hip, so I started to walk like him. And this is about the way he walked. And I did too for years. <laughs> so I walked like that too. All those years that I was hip, I used to walk like that. I think maybe I still got a little bit of a characteristic of doing that. I still got part of that machinery in there. But anyway, that was part of being hip, you see. And so part of being hip is going to the penitentiary and the whole, the whole smear. If anything I say today, you may not agree with. And you don't have to believe anything I say, but this one thing I can say for real, very, very, I can say with much certainty. And that is that a person that gets high is anything but hip. There may be some of you that may resent that, and here's what I mean by that. Let me back that statement up and see if it makes sense to you. To begin with, life is nothing but a game. When I say game, I merely means that a game has certain anatomies. It has an anatomy. For example, a person goes out to play basketball. There are certain things that he can do in the game. There are people playing in the game, just like there are people in life. In the game, there are certain things that we can do, and if we do them well, we get rewarded. There are certain things that we can't do, and if we do them, we are penalized for it in a game of basketball. So we can win the game, or we can go out of it just by goofing. In life, it's the same way. We're players. Certain things that we do, and if we do them properly, we do nothing but prosper. If we do some of the other things, which aren't groovy as far as this physical universe is concerned, well, then we get penalized. And the people that impose these penalties are police officers and just this physical universe in general. So if you saw somebody going to a basketball game and you saw that instead of dribbling the ball, he ran with it, instead of putting it in that basket, he put it in this one, and instead of passing it to the guys who were wearing red like he was, he passed it to the guys who were wearing green, you'd look at him and you couldn't say he was hip. You'd think he was a little, a little crazy. Well, it's the same thing in life. You'd say, well, he's playing the game against himself and his, and his friends his team. But when a person does something in life that's going to backfire on him, when he plays a game that is going to backfire on him, he can't be too hip, can he? <laughs>